close your eyes. Think back to when you were 12. Where are you? At home? With your friends in school? What are you wearing? What toys are you playing with? Who do you love? Think of your family. Now, imagine seeing your hometown destroyed, ripped up, terrorized. You don't know if your friends are dead or alive. You must run away, not next door, across the country, across the world. Open your eyes again. Hello, I'm Yeva, I'm from Ukraine and I'm 12 years old. My life was full of hopes and dreams. Normal, happy. Let me take you back to how it was, back to my hometown of Kharkiv in eastern Ukraine, less than one year ago. Like many children who are 12, I live in my own imaginary world. I dream of traveling, seeing America, walking along Italian streets in how real pasta and pizza taste, flying to London, studying here in Oxford University. February 23rd, last year, was just another ordinary day. I get ready to school. We can choose our own clothes, so I hunt through my wardrobe. I put on a cool new jacket and some jeans. I play with my friends Veronika and Igor, and we run like rockets. I love lessons. I love learning. I'm hungry for new facts, new skills, to play the piano, to learn foreign languages, to read the history of different countries. And after school, it snows. My friend Igor throws a snowball at me, and I run, laughing, stumbling to escape. I hope you recognize this picture. I hope you experience some of this. Happy childhood, carefree. For a dinner, we eat baked fish in sour cream sauce. It was perfect. Grandpa comes and he brings my favorite cherry cake. A perfect evening. This was my life in those last perfect days. But the next day, at 5.10 in the morning, on February 24th, my dream smashed like a glass vase. Suddenly an explosion. The shrieking of car alarms. Missiles crashed in from the Russian border. We could see them from our window. I live with my wonderful granny. She said, is Putin really starting war with Ukraine? He was, he is, a blundering escape to the basement. Panic, tears, no more dreams. Now there's a new goal, to survive. I pray to go to back to school. I want to see my classmates again. But I've got biology test, I think. I can't be in a war. I will never return to school. I pray for a peaceful sky, for a shining sun, but that doesn't happen. After hours shaking in the basement, I feel so fiercely that all of us must appreciate peaceful life. All of you here appreciate your peaceful life. I desperately want to go outside, to run around the playground and gaze up at weird fluffy clouds. I cannot. The basement is my world. I seek of breathing dust. 
thrown up by explosions. In the evening, the shelling becomes worse and worse. I don't know where to hide. I cut a lot with my grandmother. I only feel safe with her by me. I try to believe that we can survive. Bravely, we go back to our house. I collect my diary and I bring it to the basement. I begin to write things down as they happen. The situation becomes far worse. Tanks and military vehicles stand between the houses. We cannot believe it. Imagine it. Tanks on the streets of Oxford, of your hometown, blaze. Imagine it. Snow begins to fall. Food scarce. I sink into despair. Explosions. Tanks. War blades. Bombs. Nothing is recognizable. We have no idea what will happen tomorrow, in an hour, or even in 10 minutes time. Time flies by, then it drags on forever. I can't understand what is happening. Every explosion makes me shrink inside. Nobody knows what to do. No one is told us how to deal with it. Our lives hanging in the balance. I only remember how it all began, but then the days merge into a long horror. But there is a flame of hope that lives inside of me. And thanks to my kind grandmother and her determination, we begin to plan our escape. We leave everything behind. I ask, what about my clothes and other things? I will remember her wise answer forever. Do not think about that. Yeva. We run to Ina's house. She's a good friend of my grandma. Many friends do not have time to leave. Merciless explosion began. If we had stayed to collect our clothes and other things, we could have lost our lives. On the sixth day of the war, at 1 p.m., a cluster bomb flies into, a par into the kitchen of our apartments. It destroys everything in its path. Three whole walls. All our wonderful kitchen turns to rubbish. Ruined. In the bedroom, the window blows out along with the frame. In the evening, more of this horror. When plane after plane drops bombs on the people's houses, we know we have to move. We try to leave the city, but not even friends and relatives can help. Not a single taxi can take us out. Everything in the city has to working because of the bombings. And then, first of many miracles, a friend, a friend sends us a phone number of volunteers. They might take us west to Dnipro, a city in central Ukraine, a hub for people running from the war. We get in the car. We drive madly through all the queues. The next day, again miraculously, we board the train. But the journey is long and terrifying. Train stops and all lights go black. We can see and feel explosions. I can't talk. I'm convinced if I so much as move, some bomb will hear me and will be killed. But miracle gain, we arrive safely in Nushgorod. We are lucky. Many trains do not reach Western Ukraine. Many 
up won't. Questions tormented me. How? Why? Who would? What has happened to my friends? My city? And then another miracle. In Ushgrod, we meet British reporters working for Channel 4. They arrange us to travel to Ireland. Beautiful Ireland, where life is completely different, where I can walk freely and don't be afraid that the rocket will fall on my head. This is where I live now, on the coast of the Irish Sea in Dublin. Porrick O'Brien, Marianne Gunconnor, Bloomsbury, publishers from EU and USA and many other people have helped me and my grandmother so much and given me a wonderful opportunity to publish my diary. Could my imaginary world become a reality? I visit Rome, not in my dreams, for real. I see ancient architecture and the famous painting in Sistine Chapel where gold and man touch. I let the water in Trevi Fontaine run through my fingers. I won't swim there, but maybe next time. I feel the spirit of Italian streets and taste real lasagna. Life is strange and wonderful. The world is beautiful. Once again, I can dream and imagine. But now my dream is to see my diary published and read. I dream that it makes people realize what war surely does. It destroys families, children. And I dream of traveling and of meeting wonderful, kind people who welcome us and wish us no harm. I want to fly to New York and crane my neck at the tops of American skyscrapers. The clouds covering the top floors of Empire State Building. To hear and see the powerful movement, cars and people in the streets. I dream of studying here in Oxford University to earn the power to choose my own path. Perhaps as a journalist, a lawyer, a psychologist, or maybe I continue as a writer. My whole life is ahead, and I beg that my imaginary world might become real, that all our futures might be better than life today. Please, dream with me. We can live without wars, hunger, thirst, sickness and suffering. My generation can make our world meaningful and self-sufficient. It is in our hands to make it the way as we want it to be. And I dream that my diary might wake people up, people of all nationalities. I realize that the most important thing of all is life. Many people continue to live with shellings. They continue to live their lives in basements. They want to protect their property, their possessions, without ever thinking that at any moment, everything can be destroyed anyway by bombs. They do not realize that they will not able to take their cars, apartments, money to the heaven or that the most valuable thing that we all have is life. War has taught me how precious our lives are. <coughs> Nothing else matters. And I want opportunity to live mine to the full in peace. Strong faith in God works wonders. We asked for help and he heard us. He paved for us the way to safety. Grandma always told me that miracles can happen. Now I believe her. 
I hope that miracles happen for you all too and that you will always live in a peace without war. Thank you so much for coming today.